thoroughbred. Bone density tuned to match the test of racing. One way these elite athletes, formed by nature, refined by breeding, and shaped by training, conquer the derby. The supreme test. We're currently standing about 150 meters from the finish post of the Investec Derby, the most famous piece of wood in the world, and the actual benchmark on which the thoroughbred is built. Behind me is the Queen Stand, and just across the road is a stable belonging to Simon Dow. He's a local trainer here at Epsom, and he doesn't have a runner in the Investec Oaks, and he doesn't have a runner in the Investec Derby, but he has five runners on those two days, and we thought it was important just to catch up with a local trainer who's got some realistic outside chances of running in the money on Friday Oaks Day and Saturday Investec Derby Day. So let's catch up with Simon Dow. Nothing better for an Epsom trainer than to start the day off with a runner. Absolutely, and um, luckily on the opening day we've got four chances. Is it stressful for the Epsom trainers with all the pomp and circumstance that goes with the Epsom derby, the Investec derby, the tents, the railings, all the unfamiliar sights for, for the horses that are trained here? Absolutely, it's, it's certainly an invasion um, and for some horses it's uh, fun and for some horses it uh, creates a bit of anxiety but uh, it's like everything, you know, they adapt very well. And I think probably the advantage of being here and just having to walk across the road far outweighs the inconvenience of the, the, uh, the activity during the week compared to horses that have to travel from Ireland or Newmarket or wherever. I think that's a significant factor. However, of course, we saw Highland Reel arrive here last year, uh, just a, an hour and a half before one of the biggest races in the world, and um, you know, straight off the plane and deliver an incredible performance. But um, a unique and amazing horse, of course. But no, def definitely, if you can avoid the hassle and um, aggravation of transport, and particularly the heat, maybe when the weather when when the weather's warm, it must help. Well, as we talk, we, we're about 48 hours away from Derby Day and 24 hours away from Oaks Day. Um, beautiful weather, beautiful, warm, balmy weather, but it's been a very unpredictable week. Yeah, we've had a phenomenal amount of rain here, 21 millimetres on Tuesday night, coming on the back of a very unsettled, um, we didn't really have a spring, we went straight from, from winter into early summer. Um, Epsom takes the rain very well. And a good soft, soft ground here would hold, hold no real fears for horses that wanted genuinely good racing ground. But um, it doesn't get boggy or holding. But, uh, but uh, maybe even a shower tomorrow might just loosen it all up again as well. So the weather's been a lawman to himself. Haha, <laughs> and there's a nice lead into this horse, of course, by, uh, by Lawman, who's got a great chance, in, I hope, in the, in the mile and a quarter, uh, 3.45 tomorrow, because he's... Uh, he's comes from Germany where he, all of his turf racing was done exclusively on very soft ground. He goes very well, he's won twice and been second twice for us. Second last week at Newmarket, quite a tough 12 furlong handicap and uh, he's, he's got a featherweight and if it comes up wet and loose uh, then he'll run, he'll run very well. How long has this race been in the offing? If I was honest with you Andrew, it, it really only came to our radar when we realised how wet it potentially could be for, for this horse. Um, but the owner is a local man, he lives a stone's throw away from the race course. It's his very first horse and he's only been out the money once and uh, he comes to every Oaks Day and tomorrow for Mike Convey and his team it is going to be the most amazing day that in their first years, first year, first few months of racehorse ownership they've got a multiple winning horse who's multiply won in their very famous Irish colours and who's going to be representing them on their home turf literally in their back garden. It's, it's a really exciting day for them. Hard to have one's bread buttered on both sides. You've got this fella in the race, but you've also got M&M, but he likes it fast. Yeah, I mean, um, we've got two, two bites of the cherry. M&M um, &M hasn't uh, run so well on soft ground, but the soft ground that he's encountered has been slow ground, like wet, like holding ground, sticky ground. And um, I just hope that this is going to be different tomorrow. This horse, Native Fighter, that we're with now, you know, he's drawn on the inside, he's got the perfect pitch, although they may well come over to the, to the stands rail um, if they're brave enough, because with the, with the full trail up to protecting the ground for Derby Day, that's going to mean that off the bottom and Tatton Corner, it's not quite so far to come over to the, to the stand side. And as you know, the stand side is faster. 
So Eminem is drawn 11, he's on the wide outside. He might finish up being well drawn. It'll very much depend how the race works out. Eminem, if my memory serves me correctly, was a little unlucky this time last year. Derby day, yeah, absolutely. 366 days ago, he uh, he just for some reason or another never got balance coming down the down the down the straight, and um, and he was and he was a cor uh, course winner at the spring meeting that year as well. And so it was, yeah, it was very, very disappointing because all of a sudden Franny Norton switched him to the left and he absolutely took off and he just, just didn't quite, he ran out of track. Another five strides he would have won. And so to Mr. Scaramanga. I think he gave me a little nip yesterday, so I'll have to be careful. Um, what a soldier. Unbelievable, yes. Um, he's only won twice for us, but what, the second one was a significant one, a big prize, a local group two in uh, Doha. And um, he's been truly... Uh, a star. I mean, he ran in some of the big races last year on, and gave his owners a hope, an awful lot of fun. Um, accordingly, because he's run so well, he hasn't ever slipped down the handicap hardly at all. He went down four pound uh, on turf for his last start. He couldn't get a grip on slippery ground at uh, Ascot in the Victoria Cup. Tomorrow he's on his home track. He was fourth here last year in the listed race when the ground was a little bit on the slow side as well. On the, on the same card um, and one of the biggest races that he ran last year. You know, we're pretty hopeful. To be fair, for the value of the race and the quality and the caliber of the race, it's a, it's a slightly disappointing field. And so Scaramanga's top weight, if it was decent ground, I'd be very confident of a big run if he was in top form. Uh, a little bit to prove. He's never actually run for us on soft ground, proper soft ground, wet ground. Tomorrow is Again, we have to see what happens with the weather overnight. Right, Simon, there's certain horses that uh, I prefer you to do the pronunciation. Yeah, Corazon Espanada. Actually, I'm remiss in not knowing what it means, but Spanish for something. Um, we saw him work this morning. He's clearly a very, very talented horse and looks like you've got him in the right race as well. Well, let's hope. Uh, he's, he won his, his sequence, he, uh, sequence of three races when he, when he started his handicap race and he finished fourth in quite a decent Ascot handicap last start. We've had this race in mind for some time. Sylvester de Souza rode him last twice, won on him here at the spring meeting over a mile and half a furlong. And then uh, Asker, he said, go further, try further. And uh, the race has worked out well. The eighth ran a, won a good race at uh, Goodwood last week over the mile. Anyway, he seems the horse that has got all the attributes to be suited by Epson. And uh, his owner owned Eminem, owns Eminem, who is just defeated we talked about it last year in the same race so tomorrow so it's derby day for us and this horse is a revenge mission where you have to set the record straight it looks a little bit stronger than the race last year in all, in all honesty but um as i say he's home track he's he can just nearly see the winning line from his stable where we are and um go willing will have a massive start to derby day just give us some quick insight into his owner Robert Moss, what a man. Um, started off just a little share in a syndicate and um, with us and, and he's, he's just developed his racing interest. He now owns about three quarters of the stable. He's got 15, 20 horses. Some of them are in partnership and um, a number of them he owns himself. But uh, yeah, he's been a huge supporter, very, very loyal and amazing man to have around us and in our in, in be part of our team. And uh, yeah, he's... Uh, well, it's not, you know, he's changed our lives, Andrew, he really has, you know. He's given us the opportunity to work with some really quality bloodstock <coughs> in the, uh, you know, in the shadow of the, the most famous horse, of the most famous, one of the most famous race courses in the world. So, yeah, it's very exciting. There's nothing that a punter loves more than a get-out stakes. And although you might not necessarily be punting stable, uh, this, is also, this horse has got a very live chance in the last on uh, Oaks Day, Albashir. He's going to be a massive price, and uh, three-year-olds against the older horses wouldn't be something that we'd normally get involved in at this time of year. And I'm pretty sure this is the first time that this concluding race on the card is for all ages. It's normally, historically, it's been a three-year-old only race. So will he handle the track? I think he will, because he goes around Lingfield on the all-weather. When we got him, he was rated 103. Um, on, that was on the back of an unbelievable ride by Dougie Costello in a listed race at Salisbury last year when he just got caught on the line. Um, he hasn't run ever anywhere near that form again, but accordingly he got rated 103. 
He's now rated 84, so I think even Sir Mark Prescott would be proud of me if he realised I'd managed to get a horse handicap 19 pounds in six months. And, uh, I've, and I've earned some prize money with him along the way because he'd been second a couple of times. Ran an amazing race in the All Weather Championships over six furlongs, which would have been inadequate at, uh, at uh, Lingfield, but we had a go, 150,000 pound race. It was a big prize, didn't get beat very far. And he ran very well in the listed there over seven furlongs as well, uh, at scratch weight. So, so that was, uh, you know, I think 84, if it was a three-year-old only handicap. And Biasai, who absolutely is offspring, loves soft ground, out of a trans island mare. He's got a feather weight on his back tomorrow. Um, not drawn too bad, will jump and go handy. And um, we've been trying to get his confidence, dropping him back back in distance and riding him to finish and that hasn't really worked but um but he's looks better than he's ever looked since we've had him and he's in on in a very good place uh, i'm hopeful of, of a maybe a, a live each way chance at a massive price he's going to be 33 66 to 1 something like that well guys this has uh, been an interview with sir simon dow who's now managed to drop the source from 103 down to 84 he's going to be any old price in the last so Fill your boots, boys, and thank you very much, Simon, for having this chat with us. It's a pleasure. Well, we certainly hope that that's been informative. We hope it's given you some sort of insight into how to structure your bets from the first race on Investec Oaks Day to the last race on Investec Derby Day. Thanks for joining us at the stables of Simon Dow. Thoroughbred. Bone density tuned to match the test of racing. One way these elite athletes, formed by nature, refined by breeding and shaped by training, conquer the derby. The supreme test.